Cottrell, and I'm an administrator with San Mateo County Office of Education. I'm excited to serve as your moderator today as we talk about social emotional learning and we learn more about Acknowledge Alliance. Acknowledge Alliance is a local nonprofit organization that works with more than 20 K through 12 schools in the Bay Area. They bring resilience to all of the work they do, whether it's mentoring teachers, working with students in a uh, counseling uh, relationship, or providing social emotional lessons in the classroom. Today we'll be discussing social emotional learning, or SEL. SEL is when children and adults learn to control their behaviors. They learn how their behaviors impact others, and they learn how to regulate their emotions. In fact, today we're really fortunate because we have local educators and we have Tracy Lyons, who's with Acknowledge Alliance. Tracy is the resiliency consultant, uh, the program manager for the program. And Tracy is going to actually help us introduce the rest of the panelists. Well, we thought, what's a panel on SEL without a little bit of SEL practice? Mm -hmm. So we have some feelings rocks here in the center of the table. And we've asked <coughs> everybody here to pick a rock from our collection that shares one of the feelings that you're having at this moment and to use that as part of their introduction. Um, so I'll start. Okay. My name is Tracy Lyons and I picked the rock that says hopeful because I'm actually quite hopeful that this is going to be fun and useful for people to learn about SEO. I'm Sylvia Sanders. I am a fourth grade teacher at Barron Park Elementary School. And the rock I'm choosing is surprised. I'm just surprised by how much goes into making a video presentation. I'm Emily Moorhead, and I am a sixth grade teacher at Columbia Middle School in Sunnyvale. And the rock I'm going to choose is loved because um, between teaching this uh, morning and afternoon I, and coming here this evening, I got to go home and see my dog, and that just fills me up with nice, w loving memories. Hmm. My name is Steve Hamm, and I'm the principal of Kennedy Middle School in Cupertino. I've been working with Acknowledge Alliance for the last seven years, and the rock I am going <coughs> to choose is pleased. I'm quite pleased to be here to share my experiences with Acknowledge Alliance. Thank you, everyone. So, Tracy, could you do us a favor and talk a little bit about what is social emotional learning? Absolutely. So, social emotional learning is a research based methodology for teaching and practicing specific interpersonal skills. Um, the standards for SEL come from CASEL, which is the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. Um, they really set the standards for social emotional learning across the country. Uh, the five core competencies that they have identified are self-awareness, which is similar to our ROCKS activity, identifying what you're feeling, self-management, or what to do with those feelings, social awareness, how are other people feeling, relationship skills, so that's managing differences between people, and responsible decision making. Um, there are many ways to approach SEL. It doesn't look one particular way, but effective social and emotional learning also includes integration of these skills into classrooms, so it's both for teachers and students, um, across school settings and in families and communities. And how did the program of SEL program at Acknowledge Alliance begin? So our program began in 2009 um, after the first cluster of suicides in the Palo Alto high schools. We were approached by some parents and teachers requesting that we create a program to promote preventative mental health skill building for mm -hmm. their students. Um, so we really dove into fulfilling that request. Um, and one of the big considerations was making sure that our program follows the acronym SAFE, which is sequenced, active, focused, and explicit. Um, in addition, our facilitators work to understand the cultural dimensions at each school and adapt accordingly. So what ma makes your program unique? So what makes our program unique is that we are mental health professionals that go into schools and partner with specific teachers and school communities. And um, by going into the classrooms, we are able to offer individualized support for the teacher and the students. Um, that can look different ways. So it's not just coming in and, and delivering a lesson, but it's also through check-ins with the teacher, consultations, classroom observations, and strength-based feedback, uh, perhaps some coaching, and also professional development opportunities for the staff at the school. 
We're going to get a chance to see a video clip of some, one of your classroom lessons. Can you tell us about what we're going to see? Yes. So this video is a fifth grade classroom. And it's a lesson in which students are identifying emotions, uh, four key emotions, worry, anger, sadness, and happiness. And they're working with those emotions in their activity um, which is really foundational, not only identifying how they feel, but getting to learn how their classmates feel, mm -hmm. um, practicing empathy, um, and then how to listen to what others are feeling in addition to communicating what they're feeling. And there's a lot of complex relationships that can come from not only the sharing of your feelings, but the managing of feelings that come from others. Great, let's take a look. start off with our, our mindfulness practice. Mindfulness is about focusing on our, ourselves and paying attention to one thing at a time, right? So we're going to just pay attention to our breathing. That's going to be like our, our anchor that's going to kind of hold us in place, okay? Just start by taking a nice full deep breath. And now the next breath, I want you to notice how your breath moves down into your belly. When we do our mindfulness practice, does it, it, it helps us to calm our bodies down? Yeah? So for today, what our focus is gonna be is about feelings. Let's think about some, just some general feelings. What, what are some feeling words? And then we'll, we'll make a little brainstorm list. Happy? Angry. Angry? Embarrassed. Embarrassed, yeah. All right, one more. Jealous. Jealous, okay. That's a, good, that's a good list. Are some of these uh, feeling words, are they a little easier to deal with or to, to feel than others? What would be uh, one, one word that's up there that's a little uh, maybe harder to deal with that you'd rather not? I have a bag of rocks because I'm, I'm a rock guy. Um, so think about, that's, if, if each, uh, each of the rocks in here is a feeling, and we're carrying this around all the time, feel that. It's gonna make uh, getting around hard. When we go to a museum, um, what do we do? Look. We look, we view. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of magically transform our classroom into a museum. I know, it's crazy, but get ready for it, because it actually already happens. If you look in your journal, if you flip the page to page 13, you'll see four picture frames. I feel happy when, I feel angry when, I feel sad when, and I feel worried when. Okay, so I want you to take, take a couple minutes and I want you to think about a time recently that you had one of these feelings. I'm asking you to take a little bit of a risk and put what you've shared in your journal up there. So you have a choice. You can decide for yourself, I don't want to share that, and that's fine. But I'd like you to try to choose at least two to put up on, on a post-it, okay? That makes sense? One thing that happens a lot, you might want to, or you might be really focused on who wrote what. Think back to our, our agreement. We want to be respectful. So we're noticing and we're viewing with, and we're, we're thinking about our responses, but we're, we're keeping them to ourselves right now. How was that? I heard that it was awesome, it was awkward, it was, what was the other, interesting? Any of the ones that you read up there, did you connect with like, oh, I've felt like that. This is about being able to see what other people are feeling. The ability to feel or understand what someone else is feeling, there, there's a word for that. Anyone know? So the word is called empathy. Empathy is being able to put, put yourself in, in someone else's shoes and feel the things that they feel. How about to close up today, since we, we, we focused at the beginning with uh, the mindfulness and we checked in about how we were feeling before and after. While you hear the chime, I want you to crack a little smile and I want you to notice how, 
how that feels in your body. You can even notice the effect that you have on each other. Thank you all. That was a wonderful example of skill building and empathy building in the classroom. Now I'm excited that we get to hear directly from the educators, those in the classroom. So Sylvia and Emily, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in the classroom and how doing social emotional lessons in your classroom and doing this work with your students has impacted their, their experience? Yes, definitely. Um, some of the challenges that elementary school children face that can impede their learning involve problems with friends, um, self-regulation, um, their ability to become independent, um, having them decide what they can do versus what their parents uh, should do for them. They're afraid of getting in trouble um, and they want to look good in front of their peers. And I think um, concerns about all of these things can impact students learning. And all of these things can be addressed really with the social emotional uh, learning lessons. So some of the lessons deal with making friends, understanding other children as the clip um, that we saw showed, learning how to be empathetic and understand other people's feelings. Um, in terms of self-regulation, sort of checking in with, um, having children check in with their bodies, uh, see how they're feeling, identify their feelings. Um, elementary school children are always concerned about getting in trouble. Like they feel, I'm going to be in trouble, mm -hmm. but there's really, there are very few consequences for elementary school students. They still have that sort of fear. And so a lot of the brain lessons, well, this is what your brain is doing right now. When you feel you're going to get in trouble, you have your alarms system, and then you're remembering and making connections, mm -hmm. and then you're realizing, oh, you know, I'm probably going to be okay. This has happened before. This might have happened to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So all those um, areas together, I think, really address some of the key issues that concern elementary school students. Thank you. And Emily, being a middle school teacher, you're working with adolescents. You're working with adolescents in really um, dynamic and interesting phase of their life. Yeah. And <laughs> you're helping them get prepared for high school. Mm -hmm. They're in feeling increasing academic pressure, they're feeling increasing peer pressures. So I'm really interested in hearing from you in the middle school experience. Sure, so yes, like you mentioned, it is an interesting phase of life. Um, many adults remember it and, and, and you know call back on that time as being a, a really transitional piece. Um, I think that for my students, like you said, the, there's a lot of demands on them. The first one it would be in the classroom with you know increasing demands in, in academics. The work just continues to get a little more challenging, a little more challenging. But um, the SEL lessons have really reminded us to continue as as teachers to continue to teach our students the idea of growth mindset, mm -hmm. and really being able to teach the students that what you work hard at is what you will you know then succeed with, and. Um, so I think they feel good about that. Um, and this is just another tool in their toolkit, if you will, of what they know and, and can do. As far as um, you know, adolescence being a time where it's independent, they're slowly becoming independent from adults. I think for me, that's one of the most fascinating things to watch in their development, mm -hmm. because you know, I, I teach sixth grade, and sixth graders oftentimes really want to be adults, but. Mm -hmm they really aren't, you know, they're, they're 11 and 12 and they're young. And so a lot of the times I feel like my role is to just guide them through that process and remind them that they are still children and this is a normal part of their development. And I appreciate the way that the SEL lessons have allowed us to really open up a conversation about that specific time of their life. Um, the other thing you mentioned was was peers. And in middle school, I think they're, you know, the, the relationships with peers are the most important thing. And so the SEL lessons have really helped us to uh, get, allow students to be able to choose their friends wisely, but also remind them what a good friend looks like and how to be a good friend. And I have definitely seen the direct impact of those lessons on my students using good communication skills and knowing what good communication skills look like. It's very powerful. Um, and the last one you mentioned is the transition to high school, which um, for the middle school student is often just 
the transition to the unknown. And that's scary for them. Mm -hmm. But the SEL lessons, like Sylvia mentioned, really teach them about their brain and what their brain does when they're scared of something. And just having that, um, that understanding of what your brain can do when you're scared, but then you know, having those tools to be able to bring themselves back to know that this is normal, it's okay, and I'm safe, and I'm okay, and, and talking themselves you know, down is, is very powerful. Thank you. So we've heard from an elementary school teacher and a middle school teacher about the power of doing this work in the classroom and how it impacts your students. I'm going to turn it to you, Steve, as a principal. Can you talk a little bit about the challenges related to SEL and doing this work in your school communities? Absolutely. So I've had an interesting experience with Acknowledge Alliance that I've had the pleasure of working in, with them on two very different educational environmental environment settings. Um, initially, I worked with them at a Title I school where we were going through program improvement. Um, the staff was very, I'd say, upset and challenged by these changes and the structural changes that were happening to the school site. Um, I wasn't able to really move them through that, and so I was able to bring Acknowledge Alliance on initially just to meet with the staff and be able to learn coping strategies to deal with the stresses. Um, of these changes and also the tools in which to kind of manage themselves uh, throughout. Um, it was nice because it was, a, it, it was a process that came in stages. After they had an opportunity to talk to staff, we were able to move to the next level where they were able to do one-on-one -on -one services with staff. We were able to do stop-ins during the, the teacher's preparation periods and have conversations with them and really um, you know, offer a service that was individualized. Um, after that year, what we did is we rolled out with that services with students. They were able to go into classrooms and observe students, offer support strategies for staff in dealing with children that were struggling um, for a variety of reasons. Um, and then finally, we were able to roll out the SEL lessons. Um, I now work at a different school that has a whole new set of stressors. Uh, we're more a high achieving school and along with that achievement bar comes a whole new group of problems for the children and how to manage mm -hmm. those stresses, how to really um, how to know how to feel and, and how to express their feelings in a, in a positive way. And so once again, I reached out to Acknowledge Alliance and, and I brought them on and first talked to the staff. I think it's very important and Acknowledge Alliance does an excellent job of, of introducing what the material they're offering, make it very clear to staff, um, and then we were able to move forward. We've had SEL lessons brought to our sixth grade students, our seventh grade students, and currently they do two sessions for eighth grade students, which touches upon what you said about that transition mm -hmm. to high school and that unknown and the anxieties that await. Um, we've, they've also had an opportunity to work with our staff in professional development opportunities. Uh, and, and certainly last but not least is our PTA has been very supportive of the programs that they offer, and Acknowledge Alliance has come in, come in and done adult education um, lessons with the staff so they have, I mean, excuse me, with the parents, so they have an idea of really what's happening in the classroom. Great, thank you. So we've heard from the front line, we've heard from a principal to teachers about short-term and long-term impacts of doing SEL. And what we know through research is that SEL makes a difference. Obviously, you've supported that in your own experience, but SEL makes a difference as far as academic performance, better behaviors, students, uh, or fewer students are in distress at school, and we know when that happens, their learning improves as well, which is mm -hmm. part of why, as an educator, I support SEL, and for us at the San Mateo County Office of Education, this is a huge uh, part of what we, we see as essential to having communities that are safe and supportive and where students are thriving, but as you also mentioned, not only students, the staff as well. However, that's kind of the national research, and I'm really interested in hearing from you, Tracy, about the, the research and the outcomes of your program specifically. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so as you mentioned, Janae, we are very excited about the results of some of our most recent program evaluations. They've been very positive. Um, and I'm going to read a little bit from the paper just to make sure I get all the numbers right, but overall, um, very, very pleased. Um, so across both elementary and middle school classrooms, uh, we use uh, teacher reported scores called the Devereaux Student Strength Assessment, or the DECIMINI. And those are pre and post scores, so before and after our lessons. And with those scores, an average of 6% gains with our mental health professionals coming into the classroom. Um, student scores fall into three categories of the DECIMINI. There's needs. So those who show the need for developing further SEL skills. There's typical for those who are in a normal developmental range. And strengths, so those that are quite good at the SEL skills already. So with those three categories in mind, um, from our assessment, the proportion of students who move to the strengths category 
increased by 8 percentage points from 26% to 34%. And the percentage of students in the need category decreased by 5 percentage points from 16% to 11%. Wow, that's very impressive. So we know that your evaluation outcomes are impressive, and I'd like to turn it back to the teachers. We already heard from you kind of in a broad context about the impact of SEL in your classroom. We've heard about the evaluation outcomes. Now I'm interested in hearing about if that's consistent with what mm -hmm. you're seeing mm -hmm. in your students. Mm -hmm. Do you mind starting? Yes. Um, I have seen an increase in empathy in my mm -hmm. students. They certainly understand what empathy is. They can recognize empathy in certain situations and it's an ongoing process for them to learn to practice empathy mm -hmm. with one another. Um, a big focus in, in elementary school is community building and the activity that we saw in the video of the Museum of Feelings I found to be very, very powerful in my classroom because the children realize that the same sorts of things that make them angry make other people angry. The same sorts of things that make them happy make their classmates happy mm -hmm. and having that sort of commonality of feeling really helps to um, increase the sense of community which in, help, in turn helps us with our instruction. Um, with the way that we're trying to teach um, toward the common core state standards and cooperation, it's really important for the students to be able to get along with one another, not just be um, an excellent individual student, but also be an, an excellent team player. And I'm seeing improvement in those areas. Is that consistent for you? Absolutely. The most important thing is that there's just a common vocabulary mm -hmm. that, that students have about these emotions as well as about you know what good communication looks like, what good friendship looks like. And that common vocabulary, I definitely hear them using out on the play yard and in the hallway and you know just in in working together in a team that kind of thing and it's something that I really appreciate um, and I appreciate the way that the vocabulary words are taught just like any other academic vocabulary word is taught that it's important and that we need to know the meaning of it but also that they can really link that to themselves and I think that's a very powerful thing for our students to have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm also interested in hearing from you as teachers, is mm -hmm. how, how have the SEL lessons in your classroom impacted you as teachers? Oh yeah, they've definitely impacted um, myself as well as my practice. Um, one of the things I really appreciate about the SEL lessons is that the teacher participates in them as a participant. Because there is an Acknowledge Alliance um, counselor in there with us, the leading, I don't have to be the one who's leading, so I have the opportunity to participate. And for me, that's really powerful because it allows my students to see, that, oh, wow, Miss Moorhead gets angry too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she, that she gets angry about things that so do I. And mm -hmm. she's happy about things that I'm also, I also get happy about. It really humanizes the teacher as mm -hmm. well as, for me, humanizes my students, which is important. Thank you. What about you, Sylvia? I feel the SEL lessons have really given me some self-awareness, um, understanding myself better, that I actually am an introvert, that I need a little bit of downtime. Um, I also have appreciated the support that I get from the mental health professionals that come in um, for having an off day or having some trouble with a student. Uh, that's great support. And then it helps me to understand my students better as people, not just as students helps me understand um, you know, sometimes where their undesired behaviors are coming from. And also, as Steve mentioned, we're in high performing districts and there's a lot of pressure on students. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's good for us to be able to help the students see their own strengths. Thank you. And Steve, back to you. As principal, <laughs> I'm inter interested in hearing about your perspectives of how SEL has impacted your teachers and then also for you as a principal. Well. Initially, when you bring a program out to any site, staff are have a little bit skeptical about what's the <laughs> results, how is it going to work, how is it going to affect me as a professional. Yeah. And as both Sylvia and Emily have said, that the best thing that I've seen is when Acknowledged Alliance comes in, that staff are able to participate. Mm -hmm. Staff are able to share the common language that's used, and staff are able to share that with not only their peers but others, and it changes the community itself. Uh, as a principal, what I enjoy is reassuring to know that the lesson's being taught with fidelity, that no matter the classroom mm -hmm. I walk into, I know that the counselor's teaching a lesson, mm -hmm. whether it's sixth, seventh grade, that those lessons are being taught in the, in the same manner. And that's really what I'm after is consistency to make sure that I know that our children are re receiving a common message. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we've had the opportunity to hear from teachers, from our principal, 
from Tracy Lyons, and now I'm really interested in hearing a quote from our students. And I know, Tracy, you have some quotes for us. <laughs> yes, we all have some quotes. Sylvia, do you mind starting? I'd be happy oh, to. Um, <clears throat> one student says that when my brother bothers me, which is every day, I walk <laughs> away until I'm ready to go back. Another student says, communication skills help me with, share, uh, help me with sharing with my friends and understanding how I talk with others. Another student said, decision making helps me figure out what to do when I am stuck. And one says, I am now more able to feel empathy. Mm -hmm. And our final quote, it's good to remember my strengths when I'm feeling down. <laughs> yes, that's great. Which is a really great segue to our final wrap up here with our feelings rocks. Um, we do a lot of work with strengths in addition to feelings. And so we always like to remind both teachers and students that feelings come and go. Everything, every feeling is okay and it's what you do with it that's important. So perhaps some of our feelings have shifted from the beginning sure. of this segment to now. So if that's the case, go ahead and pick a new feeling rock. Mm -hmm. Everyone want a chance to say <clears throat> what they've got on their rock? Well, you go ahead. I will gladly start. Yeah. I am grateful on my rock, mm -hmm. and I'm really grateful that we had the opportunity to come and talk about this today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll go next. I'm feeling really inspired. I appreciate the way that um, we were able to gather together, and I got to meet new educators who are also teaching and really mm -hmm. supporting SEL. I feel happy um, that I was able to reconnect with Acknowledge Alliance professionals and meet new people. I feel relieved. I think that kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'd like to choose one. I'm going to choose hopeful. Mm. Yeah. And I'm hopeful that the work will continue and mm. that we will continue to have ways that we can support our principals, our educators, and our students in the classroom. And I know through Acknowledge Alliance and through this work, that's a positive way to do this work. So I would like to thank our panelists for being here this evening. Again, the work you're doing in the classroom is making a difference every day for our students. The work you're doing to support our educators and our principals and our, and our students is making a difference. And that difference we know will make a difference in our community. So I'd like to thank the panelists for contributing to this discussion and for sharing your firsthand experience. So thank you for being here this evening and thank you for the work you do every day in your classrooms and at your school sites. <laughs>